So it's uh, August 2nd, and uh, let's take a look in the garden. Starting off with the spectacular globe basil. Have you ever seen something as gorgeous as that? We're not eating off it, of course. It's just too beautiful. And kale on the left here that we have sprinkled throughout the garden. As you can see, our romaine lettuce has run amok while I was in Uganda. But the basil, which is sprinkled throughout the garden as well, is looking pretty, pretty good. Been cutting it every week to 10 days. And back here is an absolute unbelievable mass of gorgeous, healthy Brussels sprouts. I'm looking forward to October, November, maybe even December. Take a look in here and you'll see we've got sprouts already beginning to sprout. One of the greatest pleasures I have with the garden is late in the season being able to pull things out of the garden while the ground is looking brown everywhere. Tomatoes have been metza mets this year. Some plants are yielding very nicely and others aren't. I have a very nice variety of things going on out here as far as tomatoes, but I just didn't pay the level of attention to them that I needed to. And so for in some cases, here we've got this uh, beefsteak, which is very tall and should be yielding lots of fruit. And as you can see, I've got two tomatoes on this single plant. And this was a result of me not being here and nobody pulling out all the suckers. So a lot of energy went into height and nothing into fruit. Without question, one of the most bizarre I've ever seen. She totally looks like she's an alien. Now, my habanero peppers and cayenne peppers, the plants are not necessarily that tall, but I do believe that with some hot weather, and I'm going to cut their water supply off, that we're going to see some real nice growth. Though tucked in here is a pepper plant that I snuck in here, and as you can see, if you look real carefully, you'll see that these peppers are actually really starting to come and look really great. All right, so let's move into the main section of the garden, which as you may remember, I have divided into a very long bed over here and some smaller beds on this side. Starting over here, the beans are running all along the entire side here at different times I've planted them. So you'll see the maturity of the leaves and the clusters of leaves are greener or more or less depending on when they were planted. Coming back down over here, have some herbs sprinkled in some locations, some Swiss chard, which I really, really love. And if you take a look at these stems, you'll see it's as pleasurable sometimes to eat these as it is to just look at the colors. Really, truly, in my opinion, magical. Um, I especially love this very bright, 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 almost orange, yellow, and then some of these red leaves truly become, you know, works of art. And just check that out. Now beyond this area, we have a whole bunch of eggplants, which are not fruiting. So I think I have some issues here with the male-female situation. My beans really ran amok while I was in Uganda, and so I have been putting up some new stringing and trying to train what were tangles and webs and get some control out of things. Finally, the beans are actually coming in. There's enough to actually harvest and eat. Um, so I've been starting to pull, but uh, we're not at peak yet. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Cucumbers, the same deal. Um, they are definitely ready to start. These plants are getting a lot taller. Um, and there are a few cucumbers in a couple of spots that are starting to show up. I've been pulling one or two off today. Here's a little baby. And there are, of course, many others. Here's another little one. 
Over here we've got some uh, pumpkins, actually just growing the small kind of table variety. And the nasturtium have finally started to uh, gain some ground here. I just adore the leaf structure of the nasturtium. It's such an interesting leaf. It, it does remind me a little bit of a poppy. And I would bet you actually that it's related. And in fact, if you take a look at the flower of the nasturtium, of which there is just one here, and there'll be more soon, it really does have a poppy-like structure. So I'm going to have to do a little research and find out what the situation is with those. Over here, some cucumbers starting to do their climbing thing. And there is some fruit, not a lot, but you know, occasionally I can grab one or two. And they're slowly making their way out into this world. Here is another big cluster of gorgeous, healthy Brussels sprouts. And some more cucumbers that are slowly making their way up. This triangular trellis. A mass of beans over here that I'm embarrassed to even show you. This is definitely not the way you want your beans to be growing. So thick and unorganized. <laughs> Poorly organized that you can't even get to the beans. However, when we get in a little closer, the gems start to appear. These are some of my favorite beans. In fact, this is my favorite bean, this purple kind of bean. It's grows to be about eight inches long, and it tastes as sweet at eight inches as it does at 12 or two. Dill is flowering all over the place, and I'm very pleased with that because those cucumbers are coming and that means it's going to be time to pickle. So all that beautiful dill seed is going to be useful. Over here we've got some Japanese eggplant just coming to life. Been pulling a couple of these off every couple of days. Nice big horseradish plant that's going to really be big in about two months. I'm going to harvest that of course sometime in October. Over here, we've got some beets that have been growing slowly. <laughs> and some curly leaf kale. Some younger versions that I'm hoping will make it through August so we can then see that grow up into the fall. And the first beets of the season that we're actually going to be able to pick are starting to show us a little size. So looking forward to getting in here. These are looking pretty nice. A little more time maybe, maybe another week or so. Over here, celery yak. So there's gonna be a lot of celery remoulade in the Austin house soon. Not gonna be eating these stalks, gonna be letting all that energy go into the root and pull those up late. And down here, another section of beans has been planted and that'll be up in about seven or eight days. Over here behind the celery act, you'll see a second stage of beets, which will probably be ready in about hmm, five weeks from now, six weeks. Some kale, as you can see, is sprinkled throughout the garden, flat leaf and curly leaf. I really like to get as many greens out of the garden as possible. And finally, over here in the bed right down here. This was the spring lettuce bed and it's being turned over to other things. And as you can see, if you look really carefully over here, there are beets which were planted about a week ago starting to make their way up through the cut hay. And in about two or three weeks I'm going to visit these little babes and I'm going to decide which ones to pull out so that there's adequate room for those that can grow big and strong. So, closing us up here, back to the globe basil. That is the report from my garden. August 2nd, 2010.